How many of you have used a cellular device? Perhaps a cell phone? <laughs> now, how many times have you been frustrated by poor signals or disconnections? Cell phones have revolutionized the world of communication, and we reach for them first because of their convenience. Increasing the speed and efficiency of cellular connections has put people in contact with the touch of a button. However, as the volume of data has increased, cell towers have received more and more signals and increased data, and needed to find a way to separate these signals so that calls wouldn't interfere with each other. They use mathematics to analyze the signals through a process called Fourier analysis. This tool is prevalent across many fields that include signal processing, such as broadcasting and digital image storage. One of the primary functions of the Fourier transform is to separate functions of different frequencies. Now, to start diving into the technical implications of a possible analytic tool, let me first explain the mathematics behind the Fourier transform. I promise this is the most math you'll see on one side today. <laughs> The equation here says that the Fourier transform is equal to the integral of the function f of t times e to the negative 2 pi i n psi with respect to time. Luckily, we can break this down even further. e to the negative 2 pi n is equal to cosine of negative 2 pi n plus i times sine of negative 2 pi n. Plugging this back into the first equation, we can see that the Fourier transform models the function f of t using sine and cosine waves. Simplifying it even further, we can see that the most important idea here. We can approximate the function f of x, y using the sum of sines added to a sum of cosines. So why is this helpful? If we take a look at the top three signals here, we can see that they're all elementary functions, versions of sine and cosine, with basic transformations. So each graph has its constant frequency. Adding the first two functions together yields the 1 plus 2 graph on the screen. And from that graph alone, we can see that it is extremely difficult to extract the functions that correspond with the first and second graph. Adding in the third graph makes it virtually impossible for us. However, that equation is able to decompose this graph into its constituent sine and cosine functions, therefore separating graphs of different frequencies. Now let's take a look at the Fourier transform in action with noise-canceling headphones. How do they work? Once you put them on, they have a microphone to take in the sounds of ambient noises. They somehow take that discordant symphony of screaming children, honking cars, and overexcited cats and turn it into silence. How? We can't just erase noise. However, it is possible to cancel out noise waves by sending out the reversed waves. Machines will take in discrete or unconnected data points, then they'll use the Fourier transform to reconstruct that wave. Once the machine has this information about the signal, it's able to send out a wave to counteract that noise, effectively canceling out sound and leaving it at zero. Now let's take another look at a different real-life application of the Fourier transform. Imagine listening to a sports broadcasting station, unfiltered, in addition to the input from your speakers, you would hear sounds from the screaming fans in the stadium, and perhaps even calls from the referee. But radio programs want their voices to be clear, so they use the Fourier transform to translate the graph of input signals from a graph on the time domain with time on the x-axis to a graph with frequency domain. Even visually, we can see that it is much easier to isolate the frequency waves that correspond with static and background noises, in this case, the cheering crowd and the whistling referee. Once unwanted frequencies have been determined, broadcasters can then send out a signal to cancel out this noise. Now, is it possible that this wave analysis tool taken out of ballparks and computers can be applied to diagnose pancreatic cancer? More specifically, can it be used to identify precancerous growths and malignant pancreatic cysts? To explore this idea, let's first take a look at the hallmarks of pancreatic cancer and the current gold standards for diagnosis. Because pancreatic cancer is often diagnosed at a late stage, it's usually fatal. However, some effects of cancers can be avoided by removing precancerous pancreatic cysts. Cysts are fluid-filled bubbles inside of the pancreas. 
Although there are many types, they're often distinguished by whether they're benign or malignant, which can often be discovered by examining the differences inside of the cystic fluid. Although there are many types of tests to diagnose pancreatic cancer, one of the, two of them include CT and MRI scans, which look at the morphology of cysts. This includes characteristics such as size and thickness of cell walls, features that you could read off of an image. The most widely accepted test currently uses a needle to puncture the cyst and obtain cystic fluid for molecular analysis. The doctor extends a tool through the patient's mouth into the stomach, which borders the pancreas to be used for imaging purposes. It's a minimally invasive test, however, as with any procedure, it carries a risk of serious complications, and it's possible to get an inconclusive answer. Now, in practice, the vast majority of pancreatic cysts are benign. Therefore, a non-invasive diagnostic test would limit the use of invasive tests only to that small percentage of patients who are at high risk for malignancies. If there were a way to simplify and standardize tests for cyst classification, focusing on eliminating as many people who don't have the disease as possible, diagnostic, the diagnostic process could be more efficient. To explore this idea further, we first have to understand the functionalities of the Fourier transform and why it is such a unique and ubiquitous analytic tool. So let's go back to current applications. The Fourier transform is also used to compress data into CDs, JPEGs, and videos. How do computers store these images? Well, in order for them to understand and process images, they need to translate them into a language that they will understand. They instead store mathematical versions, two-dimensional arrays of values that dictate colors and shades. As you can see with the skeleton, the x and y indices correspond with the position of the square in space. Once this array is then processed through the Fourier transform, it receives relative weighted values that represent the image to the computer. Now let's create a function called f of x, y. This is a function that takes two input values, the x-index the and the y-index. The output is a numerical value that corresponds with color, in this case, a number from 0 to 255. If we want to create a three-dimensional representation of this function, let's take a look at this graph. The x and y axes correspond to the position, and the z-axis, or height, corresponds to its color. We would then use the Fourier transform on this graph to approximate it, using a sum of sines added to a sum of cosines. And it's used in storage processes because this approximation saves storage space. So what does the Fourier transform have to do with pancreatic cyst detection? Well, what if we could use this mathematical analysis to identify precancerous growths based on their contents? If ultrasounds are already necessary to locate pancreatic cysts, we could continue to work with sound waves instead of needles. It would create a non-invasive way to identify specific contents of these growths, in particular to examine the cystic fluid. One distinguishing characteristic that designates cancer's potential is the fluid inside of cysts. Pseudocysts, for example, are typically non-cancerous and hold non-mucinous fluid, which has a consistency similar to that of water and therefore a low viscosity. On the other hand, cysts filled with thick mucinous fluid are typically cancerous and have a high viscosity. The capability of the Fourier transform to analyze waves allows us to apply it to the outputs received when different waves are sent through pancreatic fluids. This innovative technique would help to automate the detection of potential precancerous pancreatic cysts. It would be used to identify the ways in which different pancreatic fluids interfere with the wave and could help in finding patterns between the imaging of different cysts. This would subsequently help in determining the type of pancreatic cyst. Although a physical approach would not necessarily account for the biological or molecular differences between pancreatic cysts, the goal would be to use the simplest methods possible in order to assure patients who aren't at risk of pancreatic cancer. The physical limitations of puncturing the cyst can make it difficult for doctors to navigate the procedure and cause unforeseeable complications. 
Using mathematical analysis of sound waves to search for a certain fluid type would then save time and worries. Imagine a patient who was found to have a pancreatic cyst. They would have to undergo a procedure, then wait for the results of a life-changing test. An examination that takes a sample of the cyst can be unnecessarily complicated and invasive. Now imagine that doctors were equipped with a new, much simpler method to diagnose benign and malignant cysts. So what's the risk? It should be lower than that of a procedure at current gold standards because it's non-invasive, which lowers the frequency of complications. Using frequency analysis in this field has a potential to reinvent diagnostic tools, turning a procedure into a straightforward checkup, and ultimately, save lives. Thank you.